Hey everybody, it's Dom from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals, and welcome back to the channel. So in 2020, we were sort of forced to explore new ways to talk and meet virtually instead of physically. And all of a sudden, your computer's webcam became like your window to the world. And eventually, this got a lot of people asking, how do I use my camera that I use for photo or video as my computer's webcam? Well, there have always been ways to do this, mainly with the use of a capture card, so this concept isn't new. But last year, what we saw was like every major camera manufacturer coming out with their own own desktop app for webcam support. So that's why I thought I'd take this video to talk about how to use your camera as a webcam in 2021, because things are a bit different now, and it might actually be a lot easier to use your camera as a webcam than it previously was. So as the title suggests, I'm going to go through every major camera manufacturer and show you what the process is like to get a camera from that brand hooked up as a webcam. And if you came to this video with a certain camera in mind, I've added timestamps in the description so you can just just jump to a specific section. So I am going to talk about each brand specifically, but for now, I'm just going to explain how this process works sort of generally, because it turns out that all of these manufacturers do this in a very similar way. So in general, you're going to want to get your camera ready with a fully charged battery and preferably a wider lens. Also a theme you'll see across all of these processes is that all of these cameras need to be hooked up to the computer via USB. And mirrorless cameras like this one almost exclusively use a USB type C, but DSLRs might use a micro USB or a super speed micro. So whatever cable it takes, you're going to want to get a version of that cable that's nice and long, at least 18 inches. You also might want to turn off any power saving options on this camera and start thinking about how you're going to mount it in a good webcam position, because this is a lot bulkier than a traditional webcam. But that's pretty much it. In most cases, it's super easy. It turns out a lot of these camera manufacturers have actually made it really streamlined to use use their cameras as webcams. And this is pretty much a direct result of the world shutting down last year, but with that final bit out of the way, I am going to jump into each brand specifically, and I'm going to start out with Canon. Canon EOS Webcam Utility. Okay, you're going to go on the Canon Webcam Utility page, look up your camera model, and I'll show you those right here if you wanna pause it to see if your camera will work. Select your OS and then find EOS Webcam Utility 1.0. Once you install it, your system will need to restart. And once you're back in, you'll see that there's no actual app. It's just a utility app that works dormantly. Canon lists the compatible conferencing softwares here, which is basically all of the major ones. And Canon also has a great getting started guide that's a downloadable PDF with tons of info too. You're gonna connect the camera to the computer via USB. And there isn't much you have to do in the menu of the Canon camera, maybe turn auto power off. And Canon does recommend for best quality being in movie mode and the resolution and frame rate should be 1080 29p. Now, whatever software you're using should recognize EOS Utility as an option for a webcam source. Nikon Webcam Utility. Go to the Nikon Webcam Utility page and at the bottom you'll see your compatible camera models. Hit download, select your OS, and then download the program. And again, this is like a hidden application that will just appear as an option in your streaming software and doesn't actually show up in your applications. And here are the softwares that it's compatible with. You'll need to connect the camera to the computer via USB. And what's neat is actually in the Z5 and Z6 and 7 Mark II, this USB can power the camera too, which is a very nice feature. You'll wanna turn off any auto power off options in the menu, and Nikon recommends using the camera in movie mode with full-time AF. Again, now your streaming software should now recognize Nikon webcam utility as an option for a webcam source. Sony Imaging Edge Webcam. Okay, moving on to Sony, which is a tiny bit trickier. Go to Sony's Imaging Edge Webcam page, hit download, select your model, and here are those compatible models. Once you download, your system will need to restart. And once you're back in, the Imaging Edge Webcam software will not actually show up anywhere, so don't worry if you don't see it. 
Now Sony has a really great how to use page and on this you'll find out the order of menu operations by camera model that you have to do which is very helpful. There you'll see that pretty much the main theme across all Sony cameras is turning control with smartphone off turning on PC remote, and then when it gives you the option, connection method USB. If this looks a little bit differently to you, I was using the Sony a7S III, which menus have been reworked a little bit. And in this camera, you actually have to do an extra menu layer called transfer slash remote. So you're gonna wanna have the camera connected to the computer and turned off before starting your streaming app. You may have to do some fiddling when using Sony's app, including shutting the camera off and then on again, or restarting your streaming program. I could actually not get Twitch Studio to recognize Imaging Edge as a webcam option, but I tried it in OBS and FaceTime and it worked there no problem. Also for some solutions, Sony recommends putting the camera in auto, but I would try to avoid this if you could. Fujifilm X Webcam V2. Moving on to my favorite, Fujifilm. Go to the Fujifilm webcam support page, download the latest version, install it just like any of the others, and your computer will need to restart. If you scroll down on the info page, you'll see instructions for Fuji cameras, and the main thing there is just going into connection settings and setting it to USB webcam. Or on the X-T3, which is what I used, hit connection mode, then USB tether shooting auto, or fixed. Also, you may wanna turn off any auto power off settings. I would have the camera off and connected to the computer via USB before you start your streaming software. So now turn your camera on and now your software should recognize this as a webcam option. So this Fuji program does have an actual app with its own interface with some camera controls. And it even lets you choose some film simulations, which is so Fuji it hurts. But this is also why it's my favorite of them all. Panasonic Lumix Webcam. So Panasonic went a slightly different direction with their webcam workflow, but it's still nice and simple. Go to the Lumix Tether web page and download the software. And here are the compatible Panasonic cameras that they list. Have the camera connected to the computer via USB. On the camera, you're going to select PC Tether. The biggest difference here is that this software has its own window and it's not recognized as a webcam source like the others. It's just a window. So in Twitch, that means you have to treat it as a screen share element. And in OBS, it's a window capture. This can be kind of nice because the controls can be right outside of the frame, but it also could be a bit confusing. And this slightly different method may exclude it from some conferencing softwares, but I'm not sure. GoPro Webcam Utility. For a GoPro camera, head over to GoPro's How to Use Your GoPro as a Webcam page, where you'll find your download. It tells you to grab a Hero 8 or 9 and make sure its firmware is up to date. So if you have a 7 or earlier, I don't know if this will work for you. Your system will need to restart, and once you're back in, you'll see that the app does have an icon, but it's just a utility app and it actually doesn't open anything up. You're gonna to wanna to make sure the camera is connected to the computer via USB, and your GoPro should tell you it's USB connected. And when you activate the source in your streaming software, the feed should switch on and your GoPro will go into webcam mode. Olympus OMD webcam beta. Okay, for an Olympus camera, go to the Olympus OMD webcam beta page where you'll find the instructions, the download, and the compatible cameras, which I'll show here. Connect the camera to the computer via a USB and then power it on. In camera, connection options will pop up, then you hit this little icon, and now your streaming software will recognize this as a webcam option. One thing that's unique about Olympus's webcam process is that it needs an SD card in camera to stream in full quality, which is interesting because it's not actually recording anything. So before I wrap up, there are a few other brands that don't offer a specific solution for using their camera as a webcam, including Pentax and Leica, and interestingly Blackmagic 2, which ironically is streamlined for live production, yet you can't use a Blackmagic camera as a webcam directly out of camera. For any of these brands, you'll need an HDMI to USB capture card, like these two extremely popular options. Or in the case of Blackmagic, you could use their ATEM or ATEM Mini HDMI switcher to get a live feed. 
Okay, so that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video on how to use your camera as a webcam by brand. So this is a well-covered subject, but I figured it'd be a good idea to shed some light on this because of all those manufacturers releasing a new way to do this last year that cut out the use of a capture card. So if you have any trouble getting your camera hooked up as a webcam using any of the apps talked about in this video, or if you just have any questions in general, drop a comment in the comment section and we can start a discussion about using your camera as a webcam. Also, if you like this video, while you're down there, hit that like button. And most importantly, if you're not already, subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned in for more of our weekly content. And we'll see you in the next one.